Hi there, it's Thomas George, and welcome to this FL Studio beat making guide. So in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of how to create beats in FL Studio. I'll teach you the essentials of how to quickly create a drum part, and then I'll show you how to build up your beat with a bass and keys part. Then after this, I'll show you how to arrange your beat into more of a song, and then I'll teach you how to export your beat or song. So the aim of this video is to get you creating beats as quickly as possible, so I'm only going to focus on the essentials. I've also added chapters to this video, so feel free to skip forward at any point if you want to move on to the next topic. You can access these chapters via the YouTube scribber bar, and you can view the timestamps for these chapters in the video description. This video is actually a section taken from my complete FL Studio course, which covers many more advanced aspects of music production in FL Studio. If you're interested, then you can access our complete course via the link in the description below this video. OK, so let's get started with this video. So let's begin. So I'm going to start out with a blank FL Studio project, and yours should look something like this. Let's first have a look at the channel rack, and that's this area over here. And remember, you can show and hide the channel rack with this button over here. So by default, we have kick, clap, hat, and snare. And these really are the core essentials for creating a drum beat in FL Studio. We can enable the typing keyboard with this button up here. And if we have this enabled, then we can play some notes on our computer's keyboard to hear the drum parts back. By default, we have the kick selected. And let me just press some keys on my computer's keyboard now to trigger this kick sample. Remember, you can choose which channel you want to hear back by selecting it here with one of these little green icons. When it's illuminated, this channel will be selected. So let's now select the clap, and I'm going to play some notes on my computer's keyboard. Same with hats, and snare. Alternatively, if you have a MIDI keyboard set up, you can play some notes on your MIDI keyboard to trigger some samples as well. Just for this example, I'll play some notes on my MIDI keyboard. OK, so that's just a really brief overview of the default sounds in the channel rack. In the next video, we'll quickly look at some audio and MIDI settings. I'll see you there. OK, so let me just quickly go over the audio and MIDI settings before we create our beat, just in case you can't hear anything playing back. So to set up your audio preferences, just go up to Options here, and then go down to Audio Settings. Here you want to select your audio output device. As I'm recording this video, I have a different output device. However, normally I would select my audio interface. If I'm not using an audio interface or recording a video, then I would select my Mac speakers. Or if you're using Windows, then you can select your audio interface or ASIO for all if you want to select your built-in speakers on your computer. OK, let me now just quickly talk about MIDI settings in case you have a MIDI keyboard or MIDI controller. If you don't have a MIDI controller, don't worry, you can always use the computer's MIDI keyboard. To set up your MIDI controller, you can go over to the MIDI tab here, or you can go over to Options, MIDI Settings. OK, so under the input section here, your MIDI keyboard should appear. For example, here I have my MIDI keyboard plugged in, which is Keystation Mini 32. However, if your MIDI keyboard does not appear here, you can select your MIDI keyboard via this controller type drop down box. If your MIDI keyboard is not in this list, just select generic controller up here at the top and it should work fine. Also, if you want to use your MIDI keyboard, make sure you have enable toggled on. OK, so that is the essential settings. Let's now close the preferences with the X button in the top right. And now let's start to create a beat. OK, so as I stated before, a blank project in FL Studio will have these sounds loaded by default but you can actually choose your own samples from the browser, which is this area on the left here. You should have some samples which come with FL Studio, but you can always download more from the official ImageLine site, or you can use any of the samples that you like. For this example though, I'm just going to use some samples that came with my edition of FL Studio. If you don't have the exact samples as me, don't worry, you can still follow along with any sound you like. So first of all, let's find a kick sample. So towards the top of the browser, let's select this first tab here, which is all, which is this wave icon. And now let's go down to packs and let's go to drums. From here, let's go to kicks and we can click on some of these kicks here to preview them. We can also use the up and down arrows on our computer's keyboard to quickly scroll through some of these samples. For this, I'm going to choose this sample here, 808 kick. And now let's drag this over to the channel rack. 
so this has now replaced the kick sample that we had before. So now if I have this kick channel selected, and I play some notes, you can hear it's a new kick sound. Ok, so now I'm going to change the tempo to 140 beats per minute. We can change the tempo by clicking and dragging on the tempo up here, or we can right click and choose a tempo amount. So for this, let's choose 140 BPM or beats per minute. Ok, so now I'm going to type some steps in on the step sequencer. But before we do this, I'm just going to drag out the channel rack to make the sequence longer. Also, if you want to hear back your idea, make sure it's on pattern mode up here. So all we need to do is left click to add a step, and right click to remove or delete a step. If you're following along, you can use the same kick pattern as me, or you can write in your own. We can also turn on the metronome up here too, if you want to hear the timing when you type in your beat. Ok, so now let's type in a drum beat. I'm also going to play this back, so we can hear this in real time. Like I said, we can right click to delete a beat, I'm just going to delete this one here, and add it here instead. That's fine, let's now add a snare part, but before we do this, let's find another snare sample to use. So again, let's go over to packs, drums, and let's just close the kicks by clicking on it again, and let's go down to snares. Again, we can click to preview these, and use the up and down arrows on our keyboard to scroll through these samples. Ok, I'm going to use this 808 snare here, as I believe this will sound good with the 808 kick that we already have. So let's click and drag this sample over to the snare in the channel rack, to replace the previous snare sound. Also feel free to scroll through these different snare samples, if you want to use a different sound. Ok, so let's play back this beat now with the spacebar, or by hitting the play button up here, and I'm going to add in snare parts. Ok, I actually want to have the snare here, but I don't want to have this kick drum, so I'm just going to right click to delete this kick drum, and type it in on this last step here. Let's now hear this back. So I wanted to have a bit more space there, just so the kick and snare don't play at the same time, so I just moved the kick over to the other step. So I added the snare on beat 3 of the first bar, and also beat 3 of the second bar, and also on the end of beat 4 on the second bar. We can also click and drag to add multiple steps, and also right click and drag to delete multiple steps. Ok, so now let's add some hi-hats, and again, let's find another hi-hat sample. I'm actually going to play back the beat we have so far, and then scroll through the hi-hat samples to find one that sounds nice with a kick and snare sound. So again, under packs, let's go to drums, and now let's go to hats. So I'm going to press the spacebar now to play back our beat, and then just select a few of these hi-hat sounds to hear what they sound like with the kick and snare. Ok, I like the sound of this one, 808 close hat, and again I'm sticking with the 808 theme. So let's click and drag this over to our hats channel. So I want two hats per beat, so every other step, and I can type this in manually, or I can just right click on the hats channel, and select this preset here, fill each two steps. Let's now hear this back. Ok, so I'm just going to add in a couple more hi-hat steps, just to make this a bit more interesting. So let's now play this back with spacebar, and I'll add in a few more hi-hat steps.
We can also add a clap if we want. I'll add one, but I'm going to have it play the same as the snare. It is quite common to have the clap and snare play at the same time to create a bigger sound. Okay, so let's find another sample for the clap. So let's go to packs, drums, let's just close hats. And this time let's go to drums, mode audio. You can see here we have a folder that says claps. So I have a lot of different claps here, but I found one before that I like the sound of, which is called Power Clap 16. So I'm going to click and drag this over to my clap channel. Again, feel free to choose your own samples. You don't have to use the exact ones as me. So now let's type in the same pattern as the snare. And let's now hear this back. Okay, so that's how you can quickly create a drum beat in FL Studio. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so I think this beat sounds good, but the clap volume is a little too high. So what we can do is we can actually adjust the volume of the different channels with this dial on the right here. The dial on the left is for panning, so this is where the channel is in the left and right image. I'll leave this as it is in the middle, but depending on the style you're creating, you may wish to pan the hi-hats for example. Just for this example, I'll pan the clap to the right all the way, and the snare to the left all the way. This may be easier to hear if you're wearing headphones, or if you have studio monitors set up. However, let's just put this back to the center, and we can go back to default by alt clicking on Windows, or option clicking on Mac. Okay, so now let's adjust the volume level of the clap with this dial on the right. Okay, so I think about here sits better in the mix. We can also turn off or mute the channels in the channel rack with these small green buttons here. When they're not illuminated green, they will be muted. We can also solo these channels in the channel rack by alt clicking on these buttons or option clicking on Mac. This can be a useful tool when level matching channels or instruments in the channel rack. Okay, so that's the very basics of levels and panning in the channel rack. Next, we're going to look at creating another pattern. I'll see you there. Okay, so now let's draw this pattern into our playlist and then create another pattern, which will be the bass part. I'm just going to close the channel rack for now by pressing this button here. Then we can either use the paint tool or draw tool to paint or draw in our pattern. For this, I'll use the paint tool and paint it in at the start. And let me just click and drag this to the beginning. By the way, you may wish to change your snap settings to make sure you snap this exactly on the bar. So I'm just going to change this to bar. You notice the grid settings have changed. And then we can paint or draw these exactly on the bar. Again, we can right click to delete. So if we change this to song mode, it will play back in the playlist rather than in the pattern. So let me just press spacebar now to play back what we have in the playlist. Okay, so now let's write a bass part. By the way, you don't have to write your beats in this order. You can start with maybe a keys part or a bass part, and then after you can add a drum beat. However, I just want to show you a quick method so you can learn a fast way of beat making in FL Studio. But just to let you know, there are many different ways you can create a song or create beats in FL Studio. This is just one way that I recommend. Okay, so let's open up the channel rack again by pressing this channel rack button. And now let's add a new pattern. And we can do this by pressing this plus button in the pattern selector. For this, I'm going to call this bass and then hit enter. And you can see now the steps that we had previously in the step sequencer are all blank. That's because we're working with a new pattern. If we hit this arrow button in the pattern selector, we can select pattern one here. And you notice our steps have appeared again. Whilst we're here, let's click on this drop down arrow and actually go down to rename and color. And I'm going to call pattern one drums. And let's go back to this arrow button and choose bass again. 
in the channel rack now, even though it's a new channel, it's just the drum sounds. So I actually want to add a software synthesizer. So we can add a new instrument by going to this plus button here, and then we can choose an instrument. For this, I'm going to choose Flex, which is available on all editions of FL Studio. And it's in this Synth Classic section down here. And then from here, we can choose a preset on the left, and we can use these dials and settings on the right to adjust the sound. However, for this example, I actually want to find another sound from the browser that we can use for our bass sound. So I'm just going to close this Flex instrument, and then go back over to the browser. Let me just click on Drums Mode Audio again to close this folder. And now under Packs, let's go to Instruments. And then from here, let's select Bass. Now we can have a look through these different folders to find the bass sound. For this example though, let's choose Ibanez and have a listen through some of these. Same as before, click to preview and we can use the up and down arrows to quickly scroll through these different sounds. Okay, I like the sound of this one, Ibanez Pick 3. And now we can click and drag this over to the bottom of the channel rack, and this will create a new instrument. Okay, so now we're all set up, ready to create our bass part. But before we do this, let's have a look at a bit of organisation, so this project doesn't get too messy. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to quickly rename and colour these channels in the channel rack, so we don't get confused, and to keep things organised. To do this, just right-click one of these channels in the channel rack, and then go down to Rename, Colour and Icon. So let's rename 808 Kick to Kick, and we can click over here on the right to choose a colour. Hit Accept and then Enter, or the tick button here. Let's do the same for Clap, let's right-click on this, Rename, Colour and Icon, and I'll call this Clap. And again, let's choose a colour. For close hi hats, I'm going to call this hats. And again, choose a colour. Same again for snare. 808 snare, I'm going to call this snare. This channel here, flex, I didn't actually end up using this. So let's right click on this and then go to delete. And Ibanez pick three here. This will be my bass part. So I'm going to right click on this, rename icon and color, call this bass, and choose a color. Okay, let me just close this channel rack for now by pressing the channel rack button over here. And you can see here we have the drums and bass pattern. We can also change the color of the patterns in the playlist too if you wish. So for example, if I right click on drums and choose random color, you can see the pattern in this pattern picker is this green colour, and the pattern's also the same colour in the playlist. Again, we can do the same with bass, we can right click on this, and this time let's choose rename and colour. I'm just going to choose another colour here. And you can see now the pattern in the pattern picker is a different colour. You don't have to do this, you can just leave these patterns on the default colour, but it just makes your patterns a bit more organised, and from a glance, you can see that the patterns are different because they're different colours. Okay, so let's go back to the channel rack by pressing the channel rack button here. Now let's select the bass pattern, and we can do this via the drop down arrow next to the pattern selector here. You can now see we have this blank bass pattern, and in the next video, we're going to look at creating a bass part. Okay, so now let's look at creating a bass part. So when writing in harmonic parts, such as a bass or chords part, I wouldn't use the step sequencer. Let me show you why now. So I'm just going to add some steps for this bass part, make sure it's on pattern mode, and play this back with spacebar. So as you could hear there, we can't actually change the pitch of the notes that we write in. This is why you'll want to use the piano roll instead. Okay, so let me just delete these steps I just wrote in by right-clicking and dragging. And now let's open up the piano roll. And we can do this by right-clicking on our channel in the channel rack and then go to Piano Roll. In the Piano Roll, we can add different notes at different pitches, which is essential for writing any harmonic parts, such as bass parts, chords, or melodies. So as you'll notice in the Piano Roll, we have this piano keyboard flipped on its side. So vertically, we have pitch. And horizontally, we have time. Let me now just draw in a note. To draw in a note, make sure you have the Draw tool selected. And then we can just left click to draw in a note, or right click to delete a note. If 
if we click and drag the note up, it'll be higher in pitch. And if we click and drag the note down, it'll be lower in pitch. As I mentioned a moment ago, horizontally we have time. So you can see up here we have the bar numbers. Again, I just want to keep this video as brief as possible. So I'm not going to go over how to write bass parts, but we do cover this in our complete FL Studio course, where we have a whole section dedicated to music theory. Also, if we hover over to the right of the note, you'll notice that these two arrows appear. And with this, we can click and drag to change the duration of our note. Okay, so now I'm just going to quickly draw in the bass part. Okay, so now let's hear this back. You'll notice there we're getting quite a bit of bleed from one note to the other. So really we want the notes to stop playing when the next note plays or it will sound a little messy and unnatural. So to cut the notes, let's go back to the channel rack. So let's press this channel rack button here. And then let's right click on the bass instrument and then select cut itself. Now when we play this back you'll notice there won't be any bleed and when the next note plays it will cut the previous note. This is especially useful for these shorter leading notes here. Ok so now let's close the piano roll by pressing the piano roll button here or by hitting the X button in the top right. And now let's open up the playlist and paste this pattern into the playlist. So we can view the playlist by pressing this playlist button here. Now let's make sure we have the bass pattern selected in the pattern picker, and then we can paint or draw the pattern into the playlist. You'll notice now that the drum pattern is two bars long, and the bass pattern is four bars long. So let's now select the drum pattern in the pattern picker, and then we can paint or draw the pattern between bar three and five. So now we have four bars of drums, and four bars of bass. In FL Studio you can draw or paint the patterns wherever you like in the playlist, however I like to have each instrument on a different track just to help things keep organised. This kind of workflow is similar to other digital audio workstations like Logic Pro 10 and the arrangement view in Ableton Live. As I said I like to have each instrument on a different track, so let's now actually rename these tracks in the playlist. So let's right click on track 1, and go to rename colour and icon and call this drums. I'm also going to choose the same colour here that we have for this drums part. Same for the bass, let's right click on track 2, go on rename colour and icon and call this bass. And again let's give this a colour. So now we have the drums on the top track and the bass on the second track. And if we want to play this back in the playlist, make sure it's on song mode rather than pattern mode. Also now if we like we can play this back and adjust the bass or drums part whilst it's playing back in the playlist. So now I'm just going to add a few more notes in the bass part and I'm going to do this whilst the track is playing back. We can open up the piano roll editor by double clicking on this pattern in the playlist. And now let's add a few more notes to this bass part whilst it's playing back with the drums. So it's one thing writing a part by itself, but it's another thing hearing it with the instruments and making sure that all the parts work well together.
OK, I think this part works better now. It's a bit more interesting. So this new part does sound like it grooves a bit more, and in my opinion, it sounds more like one actual bass player would play, rather than previously just the long held notes. So let's now hear this again, before we move on to the keys part. OK, so now let's close the piano roll, and create a new pattern. So let's go up to the pattern selector here and hit the plus button. And now let's name this keys and give it a colour. Now I'm just going to click and resize the channel rack just so I can see this keys pattern in the pattern picker. So let's select this pattern. You'll notice if we have the other pattern selected, the channel rack will have some information. But this new keys pattern will be blank. OK, so now let's add a new instrument to the channel rack. So let's select this plus button here at the bottom of the channel rack and let's select FL keys. I'm also going to right click on this instrument in the channel rack and go to rename color and icon and just call this keys. And also give it a color just so it stands out from the other ones. I'm just going to play some notes on my MIDI keyboard now so you can hear this key sound. Another thing I like to do when writing keys parts is to actually paste in the bass part from the bass piano roll so I can see the bass notes whilst I'm writing the keys part. I then mute the bass notes in the keys part and I use this MIDI information just as a visual reference so I can see what notes the bass line is playing when writing my keys part. Let me just show you how to do this now. So let's double click on the bass pattern in the playlist to open up the piano roll and then select all this information. We can do this by pressing Ctrl A on Windows or Command A on Mac and then copy with Ctrl C on Windows or Command C on Mac. Now let's make sure we have the keys pattern selected and then right click on this keys part and go on to piano roll. Now let's paste in the bass MIDI notes we previously copied by pressing Ctrl V on Windows or Command V on Mac. So I don't actually want to hear these notes, I just want to see them as a visual reference for when I'm writing my keys part. So what I'm going to do is mute these notes so we can see them, but I can't hear them. So to do so, go up to the mute tool up here, and then just click and drag over these notes and it will mute these notes. Now when I play this back on pattern mode, you notice we won't be able to hear these notes. OK, so next I'm going to write in the keys part and play back the drums and bass in the playlist so I can hear the other parts whilst writing this new part. So hearing the drums and bass should help me come up with a new part that fits the song well. OK, so now let's write out a keys part. Before I do this though, I'm just going to move these muted notes down a few octaves so they don't get in the way of what I write. So let's go up to the select tool here and then click and drag over these notes. Then we can use the key command control down arrow on Windows or command down arrow on Mac to move these down an octave. I'm actually going to move this down three octaves, so I'm going to press the arrow button three times. So now these won't get in the way, but I can still use them as a visual reference if I wish. By the way, you can also press shift and use the up and down arrow buttons on your computer's keyboard to move these notes up or down one note. I also think it's a good idea to hear the other parts while writing your parts. So what I'm going to do is actually paste this pattern into the playlist so I can hear the drums and bass back at the same time whilst I write this part. So let's make sure we have the key selected here in the pattern picker and then we can paint or draw the pattern into the playlist. Now let's double click on this pattern here in the playlist to open up the piano roll. OK, so now let's actually play this back and then write in our part. Let's make sure we have the draw tool selected up here and let's make sure we're on song mode and let's play this back and write in a part. I'm not going to cover music theory right now, I'm just going to draw this in as fast as possible, but if you do want to learn about music theory and songwriting, then be sure to check out our complete course where we cover this in detail.
Okay, so I believe these chords work. I'm not too happy with the actual sound of the instrument, but we can change that later on. So I've basically built these chords from hearing the bass notes. You can also see the bass notes down here to check if you wish. So we have the C sharp, the A, and the G. We also have this F sharp in the bass note here as well. So I made sure I included the F sharp in the chord, which actually changed this chord into a major seventh chord. So the first chord was a C sharp minor, the second chord was an A major chord, and the third one was a G major seventh chord. I made it a seventh because we have this F sharp down here in the bass. I also inverted the chords, which means I changed the order of the notes of the chord, so they flow better from one chord to the other, and they don't jump too much. Okay, let's just close the piano roll for now. And you can see that our pattern is now four bars long in the playlist. Let's now click on the keys instrument in the channel rack here. Now I'm going to choose another preset and also adjust some of these settings here to find a more suitable sound. In this FL keys instrument, we can select this drop down box here to choose another presets. I'm going to choose this one here called Rhodes FL. Let's now hear this back. Okay, I think that sounds better. Let's change the sound now with a few of these dials here. First of all, I think there was a bit too much panning, so I'm just going to adjust this dial here so there's less panning. Okay, I think that's better. I'm also going to boost the treble dial here so we can hear a bit more of the highs. And I'm actually going to increase the decay dial slightly so we can hear the notes ring out a little bit more. Let's increase the overdrive as well so we get a bit more of an overdriven or gritty sound. Okay, I think this new sound fits the mood of the song a lot better. However, I do recommend writing keys parts with a piano sound, as you can clearly hear the different notes. Okay, let's hear all of this back now. Okay, so that is the keys part. In the next video, we're going to continue working on this song or beat. Okay, so I think this keys part works, but I do think it may be interesting to add an arpeggiator to this part. So what an arpeggiator will do is it will split the chords up and cycle through the notes. We don't have to add an arpeggiator, but I do think it will make this part a little more exciting. We can add an arpeggiator to the MIDI notes in the piano roll, but I personally think it's a lot easier and quicker to add an arpeggiator via the instrument settings, so I'll show you this method as it's really simple. Okay, so to add an arpeggiator, Make sure you open up the instrument. You can do this by clicking on your instrument in the channel rack. And then you need to hit this small cog icon to show some more instrument settings. And then from here we can select this spanner icon to show the miscellaneous settings. And then down here we have this arpeggiator section. And we can enable the arpeggiator by selecting one of these icons here. So first of all we have this up arrow. So this will play the lowest notes first and will go up to the highest notes. Then we have the down pattern, and this will play the highest notes first, and then we'll go down to the lowest notes. Then we have the up down arrow, and this will play the lowest notes first, and then we'll go up to the highest notes. Then after this, it will go back down to the lowest notes, and we'll repeat this pattern. Then we have up down sticky. So this is the same as up down, but it repeats the lowest and highest notes. Then we have the random mode, which is this question mark icon, and this will play the notes in the chord in a random order. Okay, so I thought up down sounded good, and I'm also going to adjust this time dial here, as it cycled through the notes a little bit fast for the part I want. So I'm going to change this to 2. You can see in the hint panel the number we changed it to. By the way, if we don't choose a whole number, then our arpeggio pattern may be out of sync with our tempo. Okay, so let's hear this back now. Now I'm going to change the gate amount here, so the notes play back a little shorter. OK, 
okay, I think this sounds good now. One thing to remember is if you do change your instrument, you will have to enable the arpeggiator again, and it will go back to the default settings. Okay, so we could even try this sound as a synth sound, rather than a key sound, just to hear what this sounds like. So we can swap instruments by right-clicking on the instrument in the channel rack, and then going down to Replace. Here let's choose Flex, which is available on all editions of FL Studio, so Fruity, Producer, Signature, and all plugins edition. So you notice when I play this back, the arpeggiator will not be applied. Also in this flex instrument, some of these presets will be monophonic, which means we can only hear one note at a time and it won't play chords. However, when we add an arpeggiator to this part again, it will only play one note at a time from the chord, so it's fine if you do select a monophonic synth if you're going to add an arpeggiator. Let's just quickly add an arpeggiator again. So let's select the cog icon up here to show more settings, and then go to the miscellaneous tab. And we have the arpeggiator section here. You may remember previously, I selected this up down arrow, and the time was on 2, and the gate was around 1 o'clock. OK, let's go back to the main window by selecting the plugin editor here. This sound is not really suitable, so let's choose a different preset. I think this one here, Ambiclav, sounded fine, and this is part of the Arc Sun Cityscape pack. By the way, if you don't have any packs, you can always get more packs from the official ImageLine sites, or you can use a different sound or instrument if you're following along, you don't have to use the exact one as me. Let's try a few more sounds too. I think this one sounds pretty cool. Let's try a few more. I think that one sounds nice. And let's try this one, Chariot Horn. Okay, let's use this one here called Chariot Horn. We also have a few macros up here at the top of the synth. So these macros allow us to quickly change the sound of the synth. For example, we can adjust the filter macro and this will filter the sound. So in this case, it will cut out or filter the higher frequencies. Preset sounds can be great to start with, but I also recommend adjusting some of these settings to try and improve your sound so it fits in the mix a little more. The great thing about this flex instrument is these macros, so if you're new to synthesis, I recommend adjusting these first as these changes are quite obvious, and later on you can dive a lot deeper into sound design and synthesis, and learn how to use the different settings in the synth if you wish, but like I said, the macros is an easy and quick way to change the sound of your synth. OK, let's play this back now, and just to keep things simple, I'm only going to adjust this filter macro. OK, so that's the key synth sound. I do believe the previous key sound was fine as well, but I just wanted to quickly show you what it sounded like with a synthesizer also. OK, so that's really the fundamentals of creating a beat in FL Studio. There is a lot more we can do in terms of melody writing and continuing to work on this beat, but for now we have the basics of a drum beat, bass part and keys parts. Let's now close this flex instrument, and in the next video we're going to look at organising the channel rack and mixer. OK, so now let's have a really quick look at arranging and mixing the beat that we've made. So right now in the channel rack, the drums are going to different channels in the mixer, but the bass and keys part are going to the master channel. We know this because we have these dashes here in the target mixer track area in the channel rack. For this, I want to put our bass and keys part on different channels too. That way we can independently control and process the different instruments in the mixer. For example, we might want to add different effects to each of these instruments. And to do this, we will have to have them on different channels in the mixer. Let's click and drag up on the two lines here. And now let's choose an available channel in the mixer. So for the bass, let's choose channel 5. And for the keys, let's choose channel 6. Also, while we're here, let's rename Chariot Horns to Keys and give it another colour. So we can right click on this and go to Rename Colour and Icon. Let's call this Keys and give this another colour. So if we do change the preset sound, it will actually change the name in the channel rack too, so just bear that in mind. OK, let's now play this back and you should be able to see that our different instruments are on different tracks in the mixer.
I also recommend naming the tracks in the mixer too, so they're the same as the channels in the channel rack, just so it's easy to know which mixer track is which channel in the channel rack. There's actually a very quick way of doing this in FL Studio. All you need to do is select the channel in the channel rack and the track in the mixer you want to route this to, then just right click the track in the mixer, and then go to channel routing, and then go to route selected channels to this track. And now you notice it's the same name and colour as the channel in the channel rack. Let's do the same for bass, so let's select bass in the channel rack, and then select channel 5 in the mixer, right click on this, channel routing, and route selected channels to this track. And I'll just do the same for the drums as well. Okay, so that is nice and organised now, and we have the colours and the name of the mixer track the same as the channel rack. So at a glance, you can quickly see which channel is which in the mixer. It's not essential that you do this, but I do think it's worth taking an extra minute or so just to keep things organised. Okay, let's just play this back again now, and you should easily be able to see which instrument is which in the mixer. Whilst we're talking about organisation, I'm just going to rename and colour this track in the playlist. So we can quickly see the tracks are drums, bass and keys. So let's right click on track 3 and go to rename colour and icon and call this keys and choose this blue colour from before. Okay, so we've now organised the playlist as well as the channel rack and mixer. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to add sidechain compression to the bass part. Side chaining allows you to reduce the level of one instrument when another instrument plays, creating a pumping effect. So I'm going to apply sidechain compression to the bass using the kick as a sidechain input. This means whenever the kick plays, the level of the bass will be brought down. This technique can be useful to allow the kick to punch through the mix a little more as the frequencies are similar to the bass frequencies. So if we have multiple low end instruments playing at the same time, then the mix can sound a little muddy. OK, so let me now quickly show you how to set up sidechain compression in FL Studio. So we want the bass to be compressed every time the kick plays. To do this, first of all, we need to apply a compressor to the bass track in the mixer. This is why it's important to route your different instruments onto separate mixer channels, as it enables us to apply processing like this. We did this previously, but remember in the channel rack, we can select the track number in the mixer over here. OK, now we need to find the instrument that we would like to be the sidechain input. This will trigger the compressor to apply gain reduction. So in this case, it's the kick. So let's select the kick in the mixer. Now we need to find the track that we want to apply sidechain compression to. In this case, it's the bass. What we need to do now is actually right click on the bass track small arrow button at the bottom of the mixer here, and then select sidechain to this track. You'll notice now this cable has appeared, which connects the bass track to the kick track and then to the master track. OK, the next step is to add a fruity limiter to the channel that's been side chained. So for this example, it's the bass. So let's select the bass track in the mixer. And now let's go over to the plugin slot over here. Let's find an empty slot and click on this. And now let's go to select. And now under dynamics, let's go to fruity limiter. By the way, the fruity limiter has a compressor built in. To access the compressor, we need to select the Comp tab down here, which allows us to access the compressor's parameters for this plugin. You'll notice in the compressor we have this sidechain setting. Now we can right click on this, or control click on Mac, and you should see the kick appear in the drop down menu. Let's now select this. Before I apply any compression though, let's hear what this sounds like. So we can actually see the sound waves here in the compressor when the kick plays. Let me play this back again and you should be able to hear that the kick and bass are muddying up the low end of the mix a little bit. So in the compressor I'm going to adjust the threshold and ratio settings until we get some of this side chain effect. So the threshold sets the level that the compression effect will be applied to. 
and the ratio is basically how much compression will be applied once the threshold is reached. I won't explain ratio in too much detail just to keep this brief, but basically if it's at 2 to 1, every 2 dB of signal that's over the threshold, the output will be 1 dB. But if we move this to 10 to 1, every 10 dB of signal that's above the threshold, the output will be 1 dB. So the more we increase the ratio dial, the more compression will be applied to the signal that's above the threshold. Don't worry if you're finding this a little confusing, you don't have to fully understand how compression works to make use of this creative effect. So just for this example, I'm going to start off with some really extreme settings so it's easy to hear, and then I'll tame back the settings to something a little more suitable for the mix. Let's now turn down the threshold so we can hear some side chaining happen. You also have a visual representation of what's being compressed here, so you can see the dips here when the kick plays. If we increase the ratio even more, you notice the dips will be more severe. And if we decrease the ratio, the dips will be less severe. This may be a little more obvious to hear if we have a 4 to the floor kick, so a kick playing on every beat. However, we can still apply sidechain compression to instruments like this, even when the kick drum is playing a more complex pattern. You may wish to adjust these other settings in the compressor too. Just to keep this simple though, I'm only going to adjust the threshold and ratio. Ok, let's now play this back again, and I'm going to adjust these settings to something more suitable. You can also bypass or mute the plugin to hear the difference with the effect on and off. And you can do this by selecting the green button here in the plugin section in the mixer. For this mix, this effect is quite subtle, but I do think it stops the low end being so muddy. We can also add sidechain compression to other instruments too if you wish, but for now, I think it's fine just being on the bass but we could also apply sidechain compression to the keys part too if you wish. Ok, so as I covered quite a lot of material in the last video, just as a quick reminder, I'll show you how to apply sidechain compression to the keys part. Let's close the fruity limiter from before, and just remember to select the kick in the mixer. Now you need to right click on the arrow button for the track that you want to apply sidechain compression to. So for this, let's go down to the arrow button on the keys track, and right click on this and now select sidechain to this track. you notice this cable has appeared that goes to the kick. Now we need to add a fruity limiter to the keys track, so make sure we select this track. And now let's go over to the plugin slot over here. Let's find an empty slot and click on this. And then under dynamics, select fruity limiter. We then need to switch this over to the compression mode, and then right click on sidechain and then select kick. From here we can adjust the threshold and ratio settings to hear the sidechain effect. Let's hear this back now. Ok, this one's a bit more obvious to hear, but now let's adjust these settings to something that fits in the mix a bit better. You can see here in the graph when the kick plays, it's compressing this keys part. Let's also AB this, so let's turn this on and off to hear the difference. Again, this is quite subtle, 
I don't want it to be too extreme, but it does allow the kick to pop a little more in the mix. So I just wanted to quickly show you sidechain compression again, as there is a few different steps involved. However, for this, I don't think we need this effect, so I'm just going to mute the fruity limiter. And we can mute this by selecting the green button here, next to the plugin in the plugin slot. Like I said previously, you can add sidechain compression to other instruments, not just the bass, but I do recommend experimenting and see what works with your beat. Okay, so that's sidechain compression. Next, we're going to look at arranging this beat into more of a song. Then after this, we create a mini mix of this song and also show you how to export this song. Okay, so right now we've created the beat, but we don't really have much of a song. So let's now have a quick look at arranging this beat into more of a song. By the way, you can also apply the techniques I teach you in this video to your own beat as well. You don't have to have the exact beat as me for these techniques to be applicable. Okay, so let's create some more drum patterns, but let's actually have less going on in these new patterns. Let me just play back the drum pattern so far. So let's click on the pattern panel over here to select drums, or we can select it via this drop down arrow here. Now let's change this to pattern mode. By the way, we need to drag over the channel rack to view the whole pattern. And let's play this back. So our current pattern has the kick, clap, hats and snare playing all at the same time. So let's create a new pattern that just has the kick, snare and clap. That way when the full drums enter it will have more impact and will create more of a build up and more of a song arrangement. The easiest way to do this is to actually clone the drum pattern and then remove some parts from the clone pattern. So let me quickly show you now how to do this. So make sure you have the drums pattern selected up here in the pattern panel. Now let's select this drop down arrow here in the pattern panel and then go down to clone. So you can see here our clone pattern is called drums 2. I'm actually going to rename this and give it a colour just so it stands out from the previous drums part. So let's click on this drop down arrow again and go to rename and colour. I'm going to call this kick and snare. Well it's actually going to be kick, snare and clap but just to keep this name short kick and snare should be fine. I'm also going to choose a colour that's different from the drums part that we had before, just so we can quickly tell them apart. Okay, so let's now make sure we have the correct pattern selected, and we can actually select our pattern in the pattern picker as well. Let me just move this pattern back, and you can see here, we have our kick and snare pattern in the pattern picker. So we can select our pattern in the pattern panel up here, or we can just use the pattern picker. Okay, so like I said, make sure you have the new pattern selected, and then I'm just going to right click and delete the steps that I don't want to use. So you can right click to delete steps, or you can actually right click and drag to delete multiple steps. For this, I'm going to right click and drag over this hats pattern to remove these steps. I also recommend clicking on the other drums part just to make sure that you did actually remove the steps from the new pattern, not from the previous drums pattern. So if we play this back now, our drums pattern has all of these drums. And if we select the kick and snare part, you'll notice it's just a kick, clap and snare, there's no hats. Okay, so that's how you can quickly clone the pattern and make a few adjustments. Next, we're going to look at saving our project before we continue arranging this beat. I also recommend using save as all of the time, so you can quickly go back to a previous save version in case you made a mistake or you need to go back to an older project. You can go to your FL Studios project history via the browser, and you can do this by going to current project in the browser, and then selecting history. However, I find it's a lot easier just to hit save as every now and again. I often have 10 or 20 different save as projects, just so I have that peace of mind, so I know I can always go back just in case I made a mistake, or I preferred the song before I made a change. For example, right now this project I'm working on is called example 15. So I recommend going to save as and adding a number at the end to distinguish between the different stages. So all you need to do is go to file, and then save as, and then call your project a different number. So now I know I can always go back to a previous version just in case I made a mistake or I want to go back to an older project. Okay, so that's save as. I do recommend hitting save as quite a lot. So you do have different versions of your project. Remember, you can go to file, save as or you can use the key command shift command s on mac or shift control s on windows. Anyway, thanks for watching and let's get back to the arrangement. Okay, so now we have this kick and snare drum pattern, let's actually make a quick arrangement in the playlist. 
So I'm going to move these drums patterns over four bars and then paste this new kick and snare pattern onto the same drums track in the playlist. So let's select kick and snare in the pattern picker and then paint this in here. I did mention this before, but when arranging in the playlist, I also recommend making sure the snap setting isn't something too small, so you know you're dragging your parts onto the bar or beat that you want. Right now I have this on bar, so I know it's going to snap to the closest bar that I move to. If you want to snap to the closest beat, you could choose beat, but for now, bar should be fine. Before we play this back, let's make sure we have this on song mode, so we can play back the playlist rather than the pattern in the channel rack. Okay, I don't actually want to have the keys part enter just yet, so I'm just going to drag the keys part over 8 bars. For this next part here, I want to have the full drums and the bass part, so let's select the bass in the pattern picker and paste this in here. From bar 9, I want to have the bass enter with the keys, and I also want to have the full drums, so let's select the drums in the pattern picker and paint this in here as well. So from looking at this, we have the bass with the kick and snare, then the bass with the full drums, then the bass, the full drums, and the keys part. Okay, let's now hear this back. just painted in the drums, the bass and the keys for another four bars there, because I think this section here should be eight bars rather than four bars. Okay, so this is starting to sound more like a song, but now let's actually add a breakdown to the song. So in the breakdown, I'm going to create another drum pattern, where it's just a kick drum, and then gradually build up the drums. I'm also going to gradually add some of the instruments too, to build up after the song has been broken down. First of all though, let's actually create our kick pattern. And to do this, I'm going to clone the kick and snare pattern. So let's make sure we have the kick and snare pattern selected. And we can clone up here in the pattern panel by hitting this drop down arrow and going to clone. Or we can right click on the pattern in the pattern picker and go to clone here as well. Let's actually rename and color this new pattern. So let's right click on kick and snare 2 and then go to rename and color. For this, I'm going to call it kick breakdown. And then I'm going to give it a colour so it stands out from the other pattern. Let's make sure we have this pattern selected. And then delete some steps from the channel rack. So for this we just want the kick. So I'm going to right click to delete the steps for the clap and snare. In the playlist let's paint this pattern in twice for four bars. I also want to have the keys pattern enter here. So I'm going to select the keys in the pattern picker and paint this in here as well, so the pattern is 4 bars long. Ok, let's now play this back. By the way, we can zoom out in the playlist, so we can see all of our different clips, by pressing Command 4 on Mac, or Control 4 on Windows. Okay, I think this is starting to sound good, but I do actually want to build this up a little more, so let's now add the kick and snare pattern after this. Let's select kick and snare in the pattern picker and paint this in for four bars as well. I also want to have the keys continue playing here, so let's select the keys in the pattern picker and paint this in for another four bars. Then after this, I want to have all of the parts enter, so the full drums, the bass and the keys. And let's actually make this next part eight bars long. So this is kind of the chorus section of the song. So let's paint the keys in here for 8 bars. And then the bass for 8 bars. And then the full drums for 8 bars as well. And for the outro, I'm just going to have the keys. So let's select the keys in the pattern picker. 
and just paint this in once. Okay, so here we have the breakdown where it's just the keys and kick drum. Then we build the drums up and have all of the instruments enter for eight bars. And then we finish with just the keys. Okay, so let's hear this back from the breakdown. So let's select where we want to play back in the timeline up here and then press spacebar to play this back. And if you don't press spacebar or stop at the end, it will just loop this round and round. Okay, so I actually want to cut the drums for two beats just before the full section, or let's say the final chorus enters at the end. So I think this will make it a bit more impactful when the full drums enter. Let's go over to the zoom tool now over here, and then click and drag over the area we want to zoom in on. So I actually want to cut these two beats here. So for this, I do want to change the snap mode from bar to beat. And it's these two beats here that I want to change. So I'm going to change the tool to the draw tool and just drag this kick and snare pattern back two beats. And let's hear this part back now. Okay, that seems to work. And when the full drums or bass enter, it seems to be a bit more impactful. There was one more thing I wanted to change and that was the outro. So this keys part here at the end. So I think this outro is a little long and I don't actually want it to resolve. I want it to sound unresolved as I find this sounds a little more interesting. So for this, I actually just want to have the first chord play. So what we can do is hover over to the right of the clip until this arrow icon appears and then drag this back so it's just the first chord. So the clip is half the length. Okay, so let's zoom out now with Command 4 on Mac or Control 4 on Windows and let's play this back from the start. Okay, so that's how you can create a quick arrangement in FL Studio. So here we created an introduction, I guess a chorus section, a breakdown, another chorus, and an outro. So that's really the basics of arranging a beat in FL Studio. Next, we'll have a quick look at using the mixer to adjust the levels and panning so we can balance this song a little better. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so now let's get a quick balance of the levels and panning for this song. Remember, you can actually adjust the levels and panning for each channel in a channel rack, and we can also adjust the levels and panning in the mixer. I would personally adjust the levels in the mixer, as this is what I'm used to working with from other digital audio workstations and also analog mixers. However, if you prefer, you can adjust the levels in the channel rack. Personally though, I find it a little easy and quicker to adjust the levels in the mixer, and it helps keep your session more organized. So what I'm going to do now is play back the song, and then adjust the levels of anything that sounds obviously too loud or too quiet. It's also important to think about the master level, as we don't want this song to get too loud and to exceed 0 dB, or the song may clip and distort and won't sound very good. However, FL Studio does add a limiter on the master channel by default, so it won't actually clip, but it may end up getting heavily compressed by the limiter. So, it's a good idea to keep the levels quite a bit lower than 0 dB. Remember, if it's too quiet, we can always turn it up after, but if it's too loud, it may ruin our track. So if you can't see the mixer, we can open up the mixer by pressing this button here. 
Let's now play back the song and adjust some of these levels during playback. Okay, so when I played this back, I thought the kick drum was a little too quiet, so I increased this by around 2 dB. And we can see our changes that we make in the hint panel up here in the top left. However, the main thing that jumped out to me in the mix was how loud the keys part was, so I actually reduced this by 6 dB. Another thing I might do to this mix is actually add a reverb effect onto the snare. So this will make the snare sound bigger, and it's a very common effect to add to a snare. So to add an effect, make sure you select the channel in the mixer, and then go over to the effects slot over here and select an empty effects slot. So let's go to select here and choose Fruity Reverb 2. And this is under the Delay Reverb section here. Okay, let's now play this back and hear what it sounds like with this effect. Okay, by default, I think there's a bit too much reverb so I'm just going to turn down the wet amount, which is the reverberated signal. Drawing playback as well, remember you can mute your effect by pressing this green button over here. So let's hear this with the effect and without the effect, drawing playback. Okay, I think that works with the reverb. However, we are adding additional reverb to the signal, so it has made the snare a little louder. So to compensate for this, I'm just going to turn the snare down slightly in the mixer. I think about half a dB should be fine there. Okay, let's now hear part of this song back. I think for now this is fine, it's also a good idea to check your mix on headphones and studio monitors. I'm just going to show you panning quickly now, but to be honest, I don't think there's really enough in this song to pan. If I pan the keys for example, there will be too much disparity between the left and right speaker, same with the drums and bass, but just for this example, I'll pan the keys to the left and right drum playback so you can hear what I mean. So let's select a part in the song where the keys enter. So we can pan with this dial in the mixer, and the more we move it to the left, the more it be in the left speaker, and the same with the right. So you don't want to pan just for the sake of it, but if there were more instruments like more percussive parts like a shaker, or maybe more synth parts, then it may be a good idea to pan these. However, one thing you could consider in a mix like this is to use the stereo separation dial. And that's this dial down here. I'll adjust this on the keys part so you can hear what it's doing. So if I turn this all the way to the right, it will make this part sound very central. However, if I turn it all the way to the left, it will make the part sound much wider. Let me show you again.
But for this mix though, I'm just going to leave this stereo separation dial in the middle. So for this example, I think the song and mix is fine. There are many more things I could add to this song in terms of instruments and of course mixing, but I'm not going to cover this right now. Remember to check out our complete FL Studio course via the link in the description if you want to learn more about music production in FL Studio. In this course, we cover a lot more than just what I've shown you in this video. We cover songwriting, music theory, mixing, mastering, sound design and synthesis, and much more. Okay, so before we move on to exporting, let's have a quick listen to this song from the start to the end. Okay, so that's a quick look at mixing with levels and panning, and also a really brief look at reverb. So I hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you in the next one where we look at exporting the song. Okay, so one last thing I want to show you is how to export your song or beat. This allows you to get your song out of the software as maybe a WAV or MP3, and allows you to put your song online, or share it with your friends and family. Before we export though, let's actually highlight our song. So in the playlist, I recommend zooming out with Command 4 on Mac or Control 4 on Windows. Now let's highlight our song by Control clicking on Windows or Command clicking on Mac on the bar numbers up here. And then let's drag this out to the full length of our song. And you may wish to select a few more bars or a few more seconds after to allow for any reverb tail. So I recommend playing the last part of the song and finding out where the reverb dies out. Then dragging the marker just after this. So let me show you now. So for this example, you could hear the reverb dying out around bar 39. So we could have the song end around bar 40. Just to be safe though, I'll have it end at bar 41. Okay, so we're ready to export and in FL Studio it's really simple to export. All we need to do is go to File and Export. So if you want an uncompressed high quality file, then I recommend choosing a WAV file or a WAV file, as this is the standard uncompressed audio format. These file sizes may be quite big though, so if you want a small file to send to your friends online, and let's say it's a work in progress, not the final version, then you could export it as an MP3, but it might not sound quite as good as a WAV or WAV. For this example, I'm going to choose a WAV file. Then we need to name and select our location. For this, I'm going to call it Beat Making Example, and save it on my desktop. And again, we can see our file format here. Then when you hit save, this pop-up box will appear. Okay, so I'm just going to show you the essentials right now, just to keep this brief. Under mode, I recommend choosing song selection. And for tail, I recommend choosing leave remainder. So if there's any effects like reverb, it won't cut off the reverb tail or the end of the effect. However, we did leave some extra space here for the reverb tail, so don't worry too much about this. Again, we can choose the output format here. I personally choose 24-bit, as it does sound slightly better than 16-bit. However, if you choose 16-bit, that'll be fine too. I'd also make sure it's stereo, not mono. You can also select MP3 here as well, so you have both the WAV and the MP3. If you do select MP3, then I recommend selecting 320 for bit depth. I'd leave the rest of the settings on default and then hit start in the bottom right. This may take a few moments, and then when it's done, you should hear a small chime that indicates your song has been exported. Then you can go to your saved location and listen back to your export and share the song or put it online. So for this, I put this on my desktop, and you can see here I have the MP3 and the WAV. Let's just play this back now.
Let's just skip to the end so we can hear the reverb tail. So there is a few seconds of silence there. We could go back to FL Studio and trim this back slightly, but for now, I think this is fine. Okay, so that's really the essentials of beat making in FL Studio. Remember, this video was taken from my complete FL Studio course. If you'd like full access to this course, just check out the link in the description below this video. So thanks again for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you like this video, remember to give it a like. And if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe for more music production videos. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.